Yes, all right. That's a resource. All right, we, we have an oil lease. We have a gas lease. Don't, don't, don't speak things. I farmed it all my life. Don't tell me that I'm... I'd ask each of you tonight to open your ears and, and listen to your neighbors. Uh, I'm not here to tell you there's all good about windmills. There's good and there's bad. You have to weigh them. First, I, I'd like to, uh, the, the town board, if you'd state your name and say anything that you would uh, like to say, uh, please do so. Jolene, my name is Jolene Esposito. I've been on the planning board, or on the planning board, on the board for, oh gosh, five years now. And I love it. I'm Ron Ashworth. I live here in town, born in this town. I was supervisor for 20 some years here. I got off for uh, a couple of terms and I come back on. The county asked me to run and to come back on the board. And at the time we were working windmills. I worked with the windmills from uh, uh, 15 years ago we worked on these things and it didn't happen the county kind of took it over and that was the end of that but I'm here to listen to you tonight my name is Anne Marie Dixon moved out here from Buffalo 16 years ago came to a meeting because I wanted to get involved in the community didn't realize it was a recruitment for running for a, a town board or a judge or whatever um, so I said, well, I might as well give it a try. Um, it's been very interesting, um, ups and downs as anything else would be. Uh, I try my best 99% uh, of the time. I can't, I, have, I can admit I've made mistakes like anybody would, but I'm going on my 16th year here um, and hope to continue to do what's best for the community. Thanks. I'm John Hill. Uh, I've lived in town for 33 years, and uh, I have been uh, chairman of the town planning board for five years. I've been a, a town justice for six years, and uh, now I've been a town uh, councilman for five years, and uh, I'm looking to do what's best and the safest for the town of Freedom. I'd now like to introduce you to the planning board and thank if we start with the beer. The, the beer list, uh, I live here in the town of Freedom. I used to be on the town board and I've been on the planning board. Actually, I served the town for 21 years and uh, we're here to make the town better and listen to what the people have to say today. I'm Dave Reinhardt. I grew up over in Eden. I've been in Freedom for like uh, six years now. I've worked in the coal-fired power plant industry for 26 years, so the windmills are a little bit in the opposite direction. But, you know, I understand the power grid and all that type of thing, so I've been on the planning board for probably about oh, a little over a year. I'm going on my second year. I'm Norm Feldman. I guess you could say I married into the town of Freedom 39 years ago when I married my wife. Uh, I've been on the planning board, I honestly don't remember how many years, it's been a while. So we've worked on a lot of different projects, we were there from the first noble windmills right on up through all these years. So it's always been interesting. Brian Arnold, 30-year uh, resident of Freedom, uh, been on the planning board for three years, and uh, like the beer said, we're just want to do what's best for the people in the community and what's, you know, what we can do to make it well for everybody. Uh, another person I'd like to introduce is our town <coughs> attorney, Jim McCauley. Jim, do you have anything you want to say? Well, folks, actually, my office has been representing this town since 1975, and uh, as Ron knows, this, this actually is not the most exciting thing that's come to our office. And we were, yeah, we did this norm about 15 years ago, 10 years ago, and we worked on the first project. I know it's been a while. Yeah. Um, we do have some people here from Invenergy. I, I offered to let them set up front, but they said something about tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to stand up and tell us who you are? And, uh,
guys. I'm here with three other people working for us, uh, Valesa Suter Klein, uh, Scott Johnson, and Gina Gasper, who works in our office in Arcade and what are they out? Wednesdays and Thursdays, always here. Ten to two, Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> and if you haven't stopped down there, uh, this is a paid political announcement. <coughs> Stop down and see Gina. She's very knowledgeable. She has experience. She worked for Noble over in Lifts and, and Ego for a number of years. And, and they have a big map, and they have a lot of good information down there. So uh, feel free to stop down and see Gina. The windmill project is really being uh, forced by the state. And there's been a change from 10 years ago uh, when uh, Noble came in, uh, the town of Eagle, as, as well as the town of Freedom. All you had to do was write up your windmill laws, agree to it with the windmill company, and construction started. Now everything has to go through the state, and it's going to be longer. I just attended our uh, first uh, meeting uh, last week over in, in Delavan, and really uh, all that really was was funding, but it was the uh, initial meeting after the pre-application application was completed. Uh, uh, the other reason for freedom, if you look at freedom, all these hills, the ridges go north and south, and then you have the wind coming up from, from Lake uh, Erie, and there's an upward draft from that, and so uh, freedom is an ideal place to put uh, a windmill. Uh, the other thing, it's a rural area, uh, limited population, and with uh, this, uh, you can't put windmills in metropolitan areas. Some will be saying, well, put them down in downstate by New York City. Well, there's no room for them uh, down that way unless you put them out in the ocean. Um, and one thing about wind, it's a natural resource, and it blows here all the, all the time. Uh, the, the second question that was, was asked of me is, what are you going to do with the money that's uh, earned from the windmills. Uh, in February, uh, Invenergy filed the pre-application application. What a pre-application application is, is the uh, application that ultimately will be filed. You have to file the pre-application at least 150 days before you file the application. And then there's going to start being hearings, as there were in Delavan last week, the first one to get kicked off. And I'm sure there's going to be monthly meetings and things going on as we move closer and closer to uh, construction. Um, that's all I have as an introduction. And at this point, I'd open this up for whoever wants to be a first person. It's all yours, Barney. All right. Uh, this sheet of economic uh, economic benefits is just new to me now. Um, you had said, uh, uh, Supervisor Lester, in February at the town board meeting that the town could expect forty million dollars over forty years. Correct. I. I'm not going to say I didn't say that. I okay, but that sounds that. about right. Yeah. Which averages out. I know it's a little bit heavy in the beginning and a yeah. little lighter at the end, but just for conversation's sake, it comes out to an average of a million dollars a year, which sounds like a lot of money. And it is, of course. Uh, and I, I got to looking online to see what other towns have gotten and what they've done with it because you didn't uh, make any or the board didn't have any specific plans on what might be done with that money. Whether we buy equipment or make better roads or lower people's taxes or so and so forth. And uh, I, uh, during that look or view online I came across a, an Olean Times article June 17th, 2017 the previous supervisor, Jim Whitaker, was quoted as saying that the Invenergy was offering $15,000 per sighting, per site, per wind turbine. And I 
heard last Tuesday during the uh, New York State Public Commission hearing that they have 34 planned sites for the town of Freedom. And a multiplication of 34 times 15,000 comes out to 510,000. So, you know, I've, I'd have to analyze this new sheet that I got to, to see how they're coming up with this money. Is, is a $15,000 figure per wind turbine ever come up to you? Oh, like I Jim Whitaker had? Number. No. I, is there anybody from Invenergy who would like to comment on that? I agree. Um, what we are talking about paying is $8,000 per megawatt. And each turbine is 3.6 megawatts. Uh, but a portion of that goes to the town, and a portion goes to the schools, and a portion goes to the county. And sorry, I don't have the math right here in my head, but let's. Sounds like 15. What is that? 8 times 3.6? What's that worked out to? What's that? $24,000? Yeah, so that sounds about right. All right. What'd you say? All right, so it's 15 to the town. Maybe that's about, yeah, that sounds about right. I would say those numbers sound about right. Well, that comes out to $510,000 a year. Yeah. Not a million dollars. Okay, well, I, I would have to look at the numbers and see what we have to you divide $510,000 by 2,400 resident, residents of the town of Freedom, you come out to $212.50 a year. What are we going to do with that? Are taxes going to go down that much? Even if the figure that you used, $20 million or, or $40 million in 40 years, a million dollars a year divided, divided by 2,400 residents is $417.50. And you're looking at this. This is a house, a two-story house. This is to scale. That's all I have to say. Thank you. We have to remember that each year it increases by 2%. Just for conversation, I went by average. You know, that might add a little bit to over 40 years. Hello. Uh, let me start by saying that I'm not personally against alternate energy sources. What I am against is what appears to me the lack of respect and disregard for the wants, wishes, health, and safety of the entire town of Freedom instead of just a few Invenergy leaseholders. <laughs> At the February 26th town board meeting, Stephanie Milks officially requested that the town of Freedom put into place a residential property value guarantee agreement to provide against potential decrease in property values as a result of the installation of the proposed wind turbines. We were told by several folks that night that there's no reason to believe that our property values would decrease and that they would likely increase. This led me to do some research of my own. There's a plethora of information online. Some of it is anecdotal. A lot of it is put out by wind energy companies themselves. Most of what I found supported the fact that large industrial wind turbines most certainly can affect our property values negatively. Land sink appraisals and consulting from Ontario, Canada states, the erection of a wind turbine creates apprehension in the general public, which makes the property less desirable and thus diminishes the price of neighbor neighboring properties. The Melanchthon Wind Facility in Ontario, Canada caused an average loss in market price of 38%. McCann Appraisals LLC from Chicago, Illinois states that the approval of wind energy projects within close proximity to occupied homes is tantamount to an inverse condemnation or the regulatory taking of private property rights as the noise and impacts are in some respects a physical invasion or an easement and gross over neighboring properties and the direct impacts reduce property values and the rights of nearby neighbors. Forensic Appraisal Group LTD from Nina, Wisconsin states that property values have been known to drop between 10% to being completely unsellable when the property value depends on view shed, peace and quiet, and an expected way of life. An article in Forbes magazine from September 23rd, 2015 states that there is potential decrease in property values caused by issues like flickering, noise, and health problems, and that they are, simply put, visual intrusions. Carl Phillips, PhD, guest editor on Nina Pier Pierpont, PhD's book, Wind Turbine Syndrome, a report on natural experiment, 
states, there is simply no question that industrial wind turbines lower the value of nearby property. The only legitimate que pardon me, question is how much. In closing, the officials of the Town of Freedom have been elected to govern and protect the entire Town of Freedom, not merely the proposed leaseholders. There's approximately 23 of them, I believe. That leaves 2,382 residents according to the 2010 census. Per section 11 of Article 1 of the Bill of Rights under the New York State Constitution, it states that no person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws of this state or any subdivision thereof. No person shall, because of race, color, creed, or religion, be subjected to any discrimination in his or her civil rights by any other person or by any firm, corporation, or institution, or by the state or any agency or subdivision of the state. If the Freedom Town Board and Invenergy are so certain that there will not be a negative impact on our property, property values because of these behemoths, then basically put your money where your mouth is and guarantee it. I feel that the town board should insist that Invenergy put a residential property value guarantee agreement in place for the rest of the residents in the town. Invenergy has done it before. They can do it here. Hi, I'm Stephanie Milks, Town of Freedom resident for the past 14 years. I have established Freedom United and have retained a lawyer to assist the Town of Freedom residents to look out for our best interest and property rights. If you're interested, please see me at the end of the meeting. Um, we're joining with Farmersville United. Sorry. Could I ask if those of you who are talking, could you please not talk? If you need to talk, please go outside. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Milks, Town of Freedom resident for 14 years. I have established Freedom United and have retained a lawyer to assist the Town of Freedom residents to look out for our best interests and property rights. If you're interested, please see me at the end of the meeting. We are joining with Farmersville United and Centerville to intervene in the Article 10 proceeding that is to be heard. I would like to address Section 14 of the proposed wind law, noise, and setback easements. This section allows for written consent of affected property owners to not allow noise levels to exceed the maximum limits or allow setbacks less than required. I find it hard to believe that a law would allow private parties to waive public health and safety regulations. There will be increase, increased risk of turbine accidents due to the irresponsible 1,200 foot proposed setbacks from a residence or a mere 643 feet from neighboring property lines. And here are two significant examples as to why, and I will present the board with copies at the conclusion of my statements, and I do have copies to pass around the room also. First, a turbine started on fire in Weathersfield in January 2012. Luckily, the turbine was in a field because there were scorch marks on it well below the height of trees. We have quite a few turbines being placed in wooded areas. Normally, they are in deserts or far less populated areas, and we just had the fifth driest five-month period on record in the summer of 2016. We should have further setbacks per risk of forest fires. With such short setbacks, our homes will be up in flames long before the rural fire departments it's get there. It's one thing to lose property values. It's another to lose our entire properties. Additionally, several of our leaseholders are not only our friends and family, but also our employers. The damage of their properties can affect many of our fellow Freedom residents. But the one incident that really concerns me and should concern every Freedom resident is that a 160-foot, 20,000-pound blade fell off of a one-month-old turbine installed by Invenergy in Orangeville in November of 2013. It was one month old. Thankfully, the hunters who were nearby at the time were not injured when it crashed to the ground. But what if we have children out exploring? That's part of our rural lifestyle. Based on my property calculations for if these were to be put in right near my house, um, the 1,200 setback, setback from my house would allow the turbine to be just 643 feet away from where my children play. But because the setback in the wind law is from the center of the turbine, when facing the west winds, 
The tip of the 233-foot blade proposed for Freedom's turbines would only be 410 feet from my south property line, which, by the way, turbines the size are not even designed for residential areas. What if we are outside enjoying the entirety of our property as all Freedom residents have a constitutional right to do so when one of those snaps off? Or better yet, how much ice can build up on that 233-foot blade in the winter and how far is that going to go when tip speeds can get up to 200 miles per hour before they're being turned off? There are warning signs po posted by Brookfield Wind Company on their projects telling you not to pass a certain point or ice or other heavy, heavy objects can be thrown to kill you. I have copies of that sign also. And I will be continuing in just a few minutes with the rest of my statements. Thank you. I bought my property in 2003. My husband is retired. I recently retired. And we thought long and hard of where we wanted to live in retirement. And we sold our home in West Seneca and moved out, decided to stay in Freedom, New York. It's a beautiful country residence, peaceful. I can open my windows at night and not hear the animals. I don't care, that's, that's life. But I don't want to hear the wind turbines. And I'm sorry if you think noise doesn't travel at night. If the kids down the road have a campfire, we can hear them at night. Of course, it's going to stop You know when they stop partying. That's fine. But I don't want to hear these wind turbines. And don't tell me that we won't hear them. Um, I do have a problem with the distance to the residents. I have a problem with values of property. My husband and I sunk all our money from our sold home into our residence here. I do believe that there's going to be sleep disturbance. If we open our windows at night at 35 decibels, there is potential for awakening. At 45 decibels, which you're saying that we're going to be getting, there is going to be detrimental health effects, and that will be observed. Um, I hope you listen to everyone here. I know I'm a new resident. I've been here for over a year permanently. And I'm very concerned about these turbines. Get solar energy. Do solar panels. Why do we have to be stuck with your, it seems like you're cramming this down our throats. I'm sorry. There is potential for Wi-Fi, which a lot of us don't have cable. We have Wi-Fi. We have cell phones. And all this is going to be affected. And these people are salesmen. So I really don't believe a lot of what they say um, at all. Thank you. I also have given rights, my wife and I, for them to come across it. Now, since we've moved to Freedom, and I'm a long-term resident of the Southern Tier, Allegheny County, grew up and raised. I fought the nuclear dump sites back in the day, too, all right? These ain't nuclear dump sites. They might be big, tall turbines, but they're renewable energy. Since I moved here, I've had nothing but cards come into my house. They want to frack my land, okay? Because we're also on the Marcellus Shale. I don't like that either, all right? That'll destroy the water. My water's bad enough on Brown Schoolhouse Road, all right? I got truck traffic goes up my road constantly. So when I talk about noise, I got heavy trucks every night. I sleep right next to the road, all right? I don't have an issue with the turbines. I don't have an issue with people that have an issue with the turbines. But we have a chance for some green energy. Construction is something I did for 25 years commercially. You're gonna have junctures in construction where it doesn't work. You're going to have to figure out problems and overcome obstacles. It's in everything, and it's in anything you do. The only other thing I want to tell you is Mr. Ellington is a retired naval officer, currently owns three properties in this area. He has one at Hiram Lake over near the wind turbines over there. He says he has no issues with them had no issues with them when they put them in. He says the people of Hiram Lake have told him no problems. This is just a letter from him 
stating, says, I feel the windmills are an excellent source of green energy for the benefits and the exceeding any negative output such as fossil fuels. We also have property at Hiram Lake, which has a large number of windmills on the east border. I have no claim complaints from any of the Hiram property owners. Since, uh, excuse me, sincerely, Gerald Ellington. This is for the board. Thank you, folks. Just a quick question. I know nothing about these things. Um, they generate electricity. So Freedom's going to get the electricity that these generate? Uh, in this case, no. The electricity would be collected and put onto the transmission grid. And All right. It's distributed you, throughout the state. Throughout the entire so state of New York. It's the transmission grid. So, I mean, electricity is, Freedom then pulls electricity in from the grid as well, but so does all the communities in the area. Okay. Draw electricity from the grid. All right. That was my question. Thank you. Hi. I'm your neighbor over there. I live in Farmersville, New York, and uh, I and a group of Farmersville residents have also formed Farmersville United, similar to Freedom United. And I think that you people really should do some very serious research on these things before you sign up for this. Um, we're sending out lots of information to our neighbors in Farmersville. And by the way, nobody knows what's going on there. And it's not a mistake. It's been kept very secret. So there's only a handful of people in Farmersville that know that's about to change. So here's the claim. Wind is green energy, renewable. We can lessen our dependence on fossil fuels. I ask you this, fact. How much in fossil fuels are burned to make the concrete a 60-story turbine needs in order to be anchored into the ground? How much fossil fuels are used in taking the steel that goes into a 60-story wind turbine? Wind is unstorable, it's unreliable, and the utilities must cycle gas and coal-fired generators at all times to back up the intermittent wind. Every country that's put these in has figured this out. Denmark is the world's most wind-intensive nation. They have more than 6,000 turbines, a tiny little country the size of Maine. 6,000 turbines generating 19% of its electricity, but not one fossil fuel plant has been closed in, in, that, in that country. 50% more coal-generated electricity is needed to cover the wind's failings. Who knew? Wind is fickle. It doesn't just blow when we need it, right? And we're all supposed to put up with these things so that New York City people can get extra electricity and we can't sleep at night so that they can have their air conditioners? I mean, I'm not signing up for that. So what do the Danes now say about wind power? Windmills are a mistake and economically make no sense. They don't reduce any carbon dioxide emissions, and it's been a terrible, expensive disaster. The only thing green about these wind turbines is the, is the color of the money that's flowing to this company that's getting your tax subsidies. You're paying for this in one way or another, and now we're going to pay for it with our health, and I think you should think about that. Ray from McKinley Parkway, Buffalo, non-resident. Yeah, I put on there I'm, I'm a non-resident because I don't actually live down here. I was informed about this meeting by, um, I'm in a local 17, which is the operating engineers. Uh, I'm fresh off of working on a project like this down in Arkwright, New York. Um, I spent a lot of time on that project from July of last year through January of this year. Uh, I was running a bulldozer, so I was right on the ground tearing apart farmer's fields and cutting through driveways and all that stuff. Now these are landowners, so they signed off on it, and you have every right to protest these things. We had protesters down there, but I was on good graces with the owner of the project, which is what Energy would be. Uh, I was EDPR down there. I worked for White Construction, who was a general contractor. So again, if you guys have any questions as far as impact like on the ground, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, I will say this. Big businesses like this, um, it's not in their best interest to build things that are faulty or bad for you. I understand that there's a misconception that they don't understand what the impacts are on the residential level, but you guys have been working on this for, what, 15 years now? I believe Arkwright, it was 19 years in the making. Um, it, it becomes a generational issue, and I can appreciate that. I live in South Buffalo. I live close to the Lackawanna farm, so I can see them. I think they look majestic on the water, but I don't have to live next to them. I don't have to raise kids next to them. I don't have to you know, send kids to school next to them. So I certainly understand your concerns. But I think you'd be remiss not to think about, and I think that the board should definitely do their due diligence when it comes to negotiating a contract. There's a lot of things on the front, during, and afterwards, impact-wise, to, I guess, give you some sort of surety that things will be done right 
safe and you'll get what, what you're due. I, I think uh, a major footprint, like you're talking here, 37 turbines, there was 34 that we put up that aren't even up right now. And that's another thing, when you talk about timelines and things like that, you can say, in, say all you want, we're going to get started in the spring and be done by the fall. Well, that's what they said for Arkwright. And uh, they're not done yet. So you do have that valve concern. And the roads have gone, excuse my French, to shit because they're old country roads. They're rural roads. And you've got truck traffic beating the hell out of them, which selfishly in construction, whether it's union or non-union, we benefit from. So I'm, I'm for these things because I want to take a step away from that coal. I want to take a, sta a step away from fossil fuels. And this is right. That NIMBY, not in my backyard, I mean, Talk about gas, natural gas, talk about wind energy, talk about hydro, talk about any of these things. You don't want them in your backyard. I can certainly understand that. But I think you should at least take the time to hear each other out and, for Christ's sake, do the research. Because once they go up, they don't come down. And if they do come down, catastrophic-wise, I hope that's not the case. You know, dismantlement-wise, hell, I'll probably be on the job taking them down. So I don't, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. So again, I'm going to stick around here. If you've got questions about the impact right on the ground, I'd be happy to answer those. And again, I'm not here to represent my union or construction in general. I'm just speaking uh, from the heart on these because I do identify with the residents that you have every right to be concerned. But hear, hear the board out and hear, hear Invenergy out. That they have more at stake than I think you sometimes might think. And that's all I have. Thank so. you. Economically, this will have a major impact will have a negative impact economically and environmentally. When you talk about the money that they promise you, your wind rates in this area, the capacity rate, the nameplate rate is one thing, 2.3 megawatts, whatever, 3 megawatts. It's not real. It's 24%. So any of the numbers and the money you're talking about, you can just do the math and say it's 24% of whatever they're promising you if the payment is based on megawatts produced, because megawatts produced in Western New York are 24%. It's all on this paper and in this film. The agreements are all based on the Megawatts, the megawatts all produced. Based on megawatt Have you read your contracts? Your contracts tell you the truth. Your contracts will also say you will lose your um, mineral rights and you will lose your status as an agricultural tax property. You will become an industrial tax property. Read your leases. And make sure that they aren't fooling you. This is a situation in all of Western New York where poor little town boards are drinking the Kool-Aid and they're forced because of our governor to cooperate with a program that doesn't comply with our constitution. The state constitution requires that local officials protect the health, safety, and welfare of the community. That's their first charge. Economically, it will be a burden. The most basic thing you will need is a wind energy ordinance that protects you. It will give you a good property value guarantee. It will give you a one mile setback. It will give you a 35 decibel acoustical limit to protect your family. It will have meaningful environmental tests. It will have adequate decommissioning terms and it will have a 500,000 escrow account for the life of the project to protect your community. When the other towns in this area, Somerset and Redfield were faced with this, they immediately issued statements such as this. Wind projects threaten the environment, economy, and natural, national security and the health of our area residents. It does affect radio and television. It affects radar. You can't have radar for aircraft. Your communications are interrupted by turbines, and the taller they get, the worse it is. The, uh, the county of Oswego and the county of Jefferson have both set up an opposition. So has the county of Chautauqua. The Danish government has canceled its offshore projects because they cost too much and they cost everyone. In the long run, the negative economic and environmental effects far surpass any possible benefits that you may think these salesmen, who are, are basically representing special interest lobbyists on Wall Street, because they're getting 75% of their money 
from the state and the federal government subsidies. Those are our taxes. Don't let your local pilot go through. That'll help because then these guys won't get a tax break from your county. And then they'll say, well, if we don't get it. We're only getting a tax break from the feds and the state. And now we're not getting it from the county. Maybe we'll find some other suckers somewhere. So please, take a look at the film, share it. It's our county executive. He says, no windmills. I have Rick Lang, Scotch Road Freedom. I also own property up in Farmersville. Uh, I asked the board, is everybody on board with wind power? No. no. That's what I thought. I, I kind of gleaned that over the last few meetings. How about the planning board? You're all for wind power or against? Kind of neutral. See, I'm neutral too. Exactly. I'm totally I've neutral. I've been to a planning board meeting. All, for it. all right. I, uh, I'm not for it or against it because this is new to me and I'm still researching. And I got a lot of info tonight that I'm going to take home and look at. But uh, one thing, our board, we elected them. So if someone's accusing you of drinking Kool-Aid, they're calling you morons. We did not elect morons. I know you're doing your research just like I am. So that's an insult. And I just wanted to come up and mention that. As far as having windmills, I like renewable energy too. But someone else just mentioned, you can't store it. What can you store? What kind of energy can you get in store unless you have batteries? And you're not gonna have batteries. I'm telling you, this is all new. And I believe you guys are doing what's in our best interest. And that's it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And I just wanna add to the record that I, I agree with what Tracy has to say too, because that is definitely a concern of mine also is our property values. Um, I'm gonna to touch a little bit onto, onto the noise. I have a friend who lives in the town of Eagle, and as she will tell you, the, the windmills are noisy. They're much noisier than what they want, want to present that they are. There's also, if I don't know them personally, but a family over there who had, had, has had TV interference and cell phone interference that they've lost that. My husband works with a coworker in Sheldon that lives with the windmills up there, and he will say again, first thing he'll say is they're noisy. And he also gets the flickering the light flickering. The rural background noise sound pressure level is 30 decibels. In the, in the plans here, um, it was written up that it would be 50, 50 allowable. This is a hilly terrain, sound travels more, and also at night, sound is louder. A wind turbine that's 1,640 feet away has, will create 38 decibels. Um, and then again in here, it's, they're saying that 1,200 feet, 1,200 feet away from a residence for land. Weathersfield, there's 10 turbines up there, gone, gone up there. Um, not that long ago, it was on a breezy day. There were four out of 10 in operation. There was oil dripping out of them, and I do have some pictures here that I will, will share. The entire bottom of the motor is covered in it. Turbines may be quiet when they're new, but later on down the road, me mechanical structures deteriorate. How will the noise decibel levels be addressed in the future? Um, the, the wind turbines over there were about 18, approximately 18 years old over in Weathersfield. Another thing, um, visual impact. I have a beautiful view. I am up on the top of a hill. That's the first thing that people say when they come to my home, is what a beautiful view that I have. I did not sign up for industrial sized windmills because they are gonna be right front and center, right smack dab in my view. Um, I'm also gonna have, along with it, is going to come along with the noise, and along with that is gonna be the red flickering lights at night and in the morning when the sun rises. I'm, or sorry, it's gonna be the red blinking lights at night, and in the morning when the sun rises, then it's gonna be the flickering from the sun. Thank you came here to try and get some answers. Two proposed windmills were approximately 3,000 feet from my house. I live on top of the hill. I want to know how, how long are the lengths of the tower sections? Sorry. You're asking us that question? Yes, yes. 
the sections that are you going to be transporting for construction? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have, it's different lengths, I'm sure, for different models of turbines, but, you know, if the tower is, the tower is 300 feet tall, so, I mean, you're probably looking at lengths between 50 and 100 feet. Okay, how long are the blades? Now, when they were putting out windmills, I saw trucks going down the road with the blades on them. How do you propose to get a 233-foot blade plus the truck trailer down Bray Road for construction? Well, I can tell you from living on the road that there is no way you're going to get a truck with a blade to make any of those turns to get on the Bray Road. Mm -hmm. They'll bring them in by helicopter if they have to. Is that true? Maybe. We have no plans to use helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough money to do it out there. I disagree with you. It is, that is a big challenge, though. You're right. Getting those, those long blades in here is a challenge. Okay. And noise levels that close, you figure how many decibels? Uh, we said we we're gonna, our plan is to design the project for 45 decibels maximum noise level. And that's running 24 hours a day? No, that would, that would be the maximum noise level that occurs when the wind speeds are at, I don't have the exact, when the wind speeds are high. Well, let me tell you something. We can see about 50 windmills from our house, and they're going all the time. So I would imagine when you put these up, they're going to be running 24 hours a day. Nighttime? Yes, the wind blows yeah. at night, so they would spin at night, yes. Yeah, is that going to affect see, uh, sleep? <coughs> Well, what if they do? Yeah. I mean, that's why you have to design it properly, and that's why we're proposing the 45 decibel limit. Well, in three minutes is up. All right. Thanks for your time. Good evening. Um, I, like most of the people who have spoken so far, am concerned about my property values. I have a hard time understanding why the board, why our town planning board, the board in general, isn't pushing foreign energy to do this. Maybe it scares them away, the thought of possibly standing up, I mean, against Invenergy a little bit that might be inconvenient for them to do this for us. If they're not gonna affect our property, it should not bother you to sign such a thing for us. Um, so, so that's my first question to you guys, why you won't do that? And, and, and you don't have to answer right now. I know you don't want to. I understand it's, ex it's probably a pain and a hassle, but it's a pain and a hassle for me to lose value in my house. Probably the biggest investment any American makes, or at least a good portion of us. Um, another question for you guys is, what, um, what about the landowners who border the properties that you're putting these up on? If you can be 660 foot away from a property line, and I can't build for 1,200 feet, What's in it for the other property owner? More than just money. I understand you might have some recoup for them, but do they lose the right to build on their property with the other 500 feet? I assume they do. No, I mean, the setbacks, the way these local laws are usually written is the setbacks work one way in that we are prevented, you know, they restrict where you can build a turbine from existing homes. But sure. It doesn't restrict people from building homes near turbines I would have to think they might not want to because there's probably a reason the law is there, but... That's, that's 
So at least in some way, they're losing some portion of value of their property over this. I mean, it's gonna be less sellable to sell that five acre piece that half is overlapped by your windmill 1200 foot setback that maybe you could build a house there, but I can't imagine why anybody would want to. Um, but that's more of a statement than a question at this point, I guess. Um, for the town board, have you guys spoke with other towns? I know Randy has, I'm guessing some of the other guys have. Um, both the ones that I, I know we've spoke with some of the town boards that were for it. Have we spoke with any of the um, previous town board members that maybe were against it that might have a different view that might say, hey, um, now we initially got this much money as was promised and then three years later it's down to this much because of maintenance or whatever's written into the contracts. You might want to look for these loopholes before you sign your law in. And I'm just wondering if we've done any research that direction to get the most out of this. I mean, if this is truly an opportunity for the town, mm -hmm. why not get the absolute most out of it as possible as opposed to signing with a first bidder that steps up and says, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks for that. You know, like, go a little further. I'm hoping you have. I, I trust that if you I haven't, you will. <laughs> Both ways. Yeah. But the ones that are against it too, or even ones that have them that are still, neg you know, it might have something. that I've talked to have not indicated that they're against it. Right. I've talked to one at least previous town board member that was. I can pass his number to you because oh, I think it would be. Board member. I've, I've yeah, just somebody that was against that, that at least is going to give you the other perspective. He got to see the whole thing through. They are in his town now. Um, and, he, and he honestly, some of the things he said weren't half bad, but some of the things he said were something to be concerned about. Um, again, the property value is going back. How are we done? Uh, Three minutes is done. All right, um, just quick board, I hope you're hearing us on this. I mean, you're hearing an awful lot of people speaking, an awful lot of us that really are truly concerned for safety, property values, these setbacks. Somewhere in the middle seems like maybe the right spot of the law that was proposed a couple months ago versus the law that's proposed now. Um, but this one seems like it was almost written by Invenergy. It is already acknowledged in this law that is it is unsafe to have an, un or an inhabited building within 1,200 feet of a turbine. That means that there should be at least 1,200 feet setbacks from people's property lines, from the tip of the blade for people to safely use their entire property. Under this law stipulations, in the calculations that I did for my personal property, 50% of my property would become unusable due to being unsafe in an unsafe zone. I do have a diagram of that for anyone who would like to see solid evidence. Um, where was I? How many Freedom residents within the vicinity of these, and I did count up 37 turbines on your map on your site, so I'm not exactly sure where 34 came from. I have a list of names, I've numbered all the turbines, I can prove everything I say. Um, so how many freedom residents within the vicinity of these 37 proposed turbines will be encroached upon like that? If the setback is at the tip of the blade, which is where it should be, 75% of my property would then be deemed unsafe and unusable. So now freedom residents have to tell their kids to stay towards the front of their property and play by the road. Freedom residents are being requested under a law to sacrifice the land that they brought for the lifestyle they chose. That's an infringement on the entire town of Freedom's property rights to the utmost extent. This type of negligent property right encroaching setback has no business being allowed in the town of Freedom, let alone the United States of America. That's two major incidents in less than two years right in our own backyard. We demand larger setbacks and more appropriately sized turbines for populated areas. Randy Lester already publicly admitted that he is aware that there are documented turbine accidents causing injuries or fatalities when he stated that there are more deer accidents than turbine accidents. In my eyes, that doesn't make a good case because all he did was inform us that now we have additional risks of major turbine accidents making freedom a less safe place to live. Completely unacceptable. If you, the town board, vote this law in under your oath of office, as written by the planning board and represented by the town attorney who are also under an oath of office, 
you put yourselves in a position to be responsible for property damages and serious turbine accidents. You'd better be prepared for all the consequences that go along with it. It talks about um, environmental impact statements, um, studies on shadow flicker, visual impact, uh, fire protection emergency plan, noise analysis, property value analysis, assessment of potential electromagnetic interference with microwave, radio, television, personal communication, et cetera, et cetera. What I would like to know is when these studies are going to be performed. Is this after it's a done deal and we can't do anything about it? Is this something that's done prior to? How does that work? Because I don't know. Yes. So in the case of our project, it's being reviewed by the state, and even those requirements are in the local law, those would apply if somebody did a smaller project. Our project's going through the state process, and we're doing those studies now. So they'd be done before any decision is made. And how, how do you go about doing that here if you don't have this, you know, just to remind everybody, larger than any other windmill in the area? or wind turbine, I'm sorry. How, how do you go about doing the study for something that size, if there isn't any? The, the studies, for instance, for shadows are based on the size of the turbine. So you, you have to use the right dimensions to study it. And you're doing this where? We, what do you mean where? Do you have a turbine, a turbine this size? No, it's, it's done on the computer. You analyze, I mean, the, Okay, the so you don't actually the, know how well, it's going to affect you wanna, the people. No, then. no. You it, just know what it's going right. to do. I won't answer your question. You won't. You just okay. don't want to cut me off. I'm telling you, the shadow study is done with a computer model because the path of the sun is a pretty predictable thing, and they can predict how often a shadow will occur on a given piece of land, and that's what's done with the computer, and it's a function of the location of the turbine, the location of the spot you're analyzing, and the dimensions of the turbine. Okay, well that's, I, I was trying to clarify, so it doesn't actually have anything to do with how it impacts people themselves or anything like that, it's just the impact of the flicker on the property. The study calculates the number of hours or minutes during the year in which shadows could occur at a location. And so you analyze all of the residences in the project area. Okay, all right. And we'll be submitting, our plan is to submit an application um, at the end of this summer, and then the state would, takes, has up to 12 months to make a decision on that application. And the people doing this study, that's somebody hired specifically by Invenergy? Is it a third party? How does that work? Invenergy is required to submit the studies to the state, and then the state, uh, and they have to be done to standards that the state agrees to, and then the state reviews the studies to make sure that they think that they are adequate and have, you know, founded all the scenarios they want to study. Okay, thank you. I wanted to tell you about the towns in Arkwright, or the, uh, the homes in Arkwright that have all gone on the market. People are selling their homes right across the board since the bulldozers came and took down their forests. Those homes are selling at half the value of those homes. The realtors have verified that. They're selling for half the value. That's true in Wyoming County as well. We have these on this film, and I will get you gentlemen a copy of the film. It includes our county executive who's expressing concern about the, the, the loss of property values in Chautauqua County. Um, regarding the amount of steel and concrete it takes, I asked an Ever Power executive, what's the break-even point? What is a break-even point? That's when you make money up to the point where you pay for it. So the cost of the steel, the concrete, and the rare earth metals, which are mined in very, very unenvironmental conditions in China, the cost of those will not be earned by the electricity made by one worn turbine for 20 years. Now, is that a green thing to do, to waste steel? and concrete and the poor lives in China who are making this molybdenum or mining it from, the, 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 um, from their farms to produce these. As I said before, the, Dan the Danes are getting rid of their wind turbines and they're selling them to us because they're now ending their wind turbine thing. The Article 10 process that came through Arkwright and Casadega was done by the state at the behest of Cuomo, who gets his payments
from the people he puts on those boards. He has received $3 million worth for his um, campaign chest from the people that he has put on those boards. He names them as heads of the boards because they give him $125,000, and then they rubber stamp the Article 10, which is what's coming your way. The Article 10 went two weeks, and the DEC was there, Department of Health, Department of Agriculture. All of those people represented us not one bit. They asked no questions of our expert witnesses that we brought on hearing on the health questions, on the property values, on the death of bats and birds. That's a serious, serious thing. Our agriculture in our, in our county will be affected economically by the, the loss of the birds and the bats because we have a lot of agriculture. Um, if you ask the board in Attica, what they did was they sent out a survey to their people. Attica is in your area. They sent out a survey to their entire town, a piece of paper that said, do you want windmills? And the people wrote back and said, no, we don't. And the board respected their wishes. That's all we ask of all of our boards. And I think all town boards should have that ethical position to just ask the people of their town, every last one of them, whether they want windmills in their midst. Um, economics, that's it. Oh, you know, we have a gas-fired plant in our county. It's called um, NRG in Dunkirk, and it makes 435 megawatts, and it sits on 98 acres. Our wind turbine factory, which will impact 40,000 acres, will make 30 megawatts. So figure it out. 30 megawatts impacting 40,000 acres versus the cleanest, safest, most reliable, most dispatchable, already set up way of producing electricity through gas, which we have lots of. 435 megawatts on 98 acres or 30 megawatts on 40,000 acres. Which one's greener? discussed and uh, make a decision if the board is prepared to uh, vote on this or, or not? Mm -hmm. We vote on a town law that stipulates the concerns that we've had. The town law that's, that's been put together by the planning board. Do you understand that? No. They're voting on a town law, April 16th? Yeah. Which, which stipulates all the specifications that the board has put together. And they'll That's out. right, right? You're voting on the wind. Correct. Oh. Perhaps. I'm not saying we're definitely voting. That will be up to the board to discuss and to determine if there's further steps, investigation, or if we're here to vote on. So next month's a meeting at the end of the Hi, Excuse me? Why don't you survey your residents? What's the harm in that? The lady made a good point. Why don't you try to find out what people really think? Uh, yeah. I talk to an awful lot of people. Not everybody. Not everybody. You need to ask everybody. Ask every taxpayer. Every taxpayer could be here right now. Somebody has a question who spoke here tonight. Okay. I told everybody understands that New York State is in control of this. We have yeah, some of the town board information. So I'm not for it or against because it, it's going to be a way to All right? Well, some of the information here tonight, and people want to hold up to some of the inferior information. They say that they're tracking me within such a distance from the windmill. The windmill is the closest windmill to their property. Is over 3,000 feet. No. We didn't come here to argue tonight. We all have our own beliefs. Can I finish saying what I'm saying as a town board member, please? I, as a town board, I have the best interest in the town. Believe me, I do. But I'm one person. We have to work together. The New York State law is going to, I don't see how sending a survey to every member is going to stop New York State from putting windmills in our town. But my concern would be to make it the safest and the most profitable for our town, which will be, am I wrong, that there will be a pilot agreement? Talking that's what we have proposed. We have proposed a pilot and a host. To the town. To the town, yes. That's we, you haven't done that yet. 
Uh, we have not formally proposed that, no. No. So this is still all in the beginning phases. I just want you to know we're not drinking the Kool-Aid, and if anybody knows me personally, I definitely ain't drinking no Kool-Aid, okay? I'm going to do what I feel is best. Will it be perfect? No, I'm not perfect, but please, just give us a chance to look this, you know, see this through. Um, it's way far than a done deal, but I don't think that we have a whole lot of control where New York State's concerned. We can do what we can for our local, with our local law, and we will work with the planning board. That's all I got to say. Folks, let me, I'd like to add, it's the question that's answered, asked earlier, you know, by Leslie, what's the next step? You actually have, it's sort of a bifurcated <laughs> two-way process. You had the whole thing in front of the Department of Public Servants, and that's one set of the thing. And Leslie and Rick, I'll get your email, and I'll let you know when they are the next meeting, so you can show that. I've known them for years, so... Um, but that, that's, that's one part. The other part is the town process. And this law that they had the hearing on, this wasn't just crafted overnight. It was crafted by Invenergy. <coughs> the original law, I mean, the basis is local law 32007. And that was over a year in planning. And the VIR was on the planning board back then. Because I remember Barb George, I saw you, there's Barb. Anne Marie and Ron were on the board that time. It went through. And then two years ago, Jim Whitaker came to me and said, we need to revise the wind law. And I said, well, we can't go revise the wind law unless you put a moratorium in. And I reminded him, and Ron and Devere should remember this, maybe Barb, when the cell phone towers were all the rage around 1995 to about 2000. And they were coming over everywhere, and everyone said everyone was going to die of radiation. And a lot of the arguments that were <laughs> against windmills tonight were put I remember we put out against those towers years ago, but we put a moratorium on to allow the planning board to do the work. The planning board did the work. I barely met with you because um, Jim decided at some point that he wanted a law with John that put a lot more safety things in. John's view was different than Jim. They had different interests. John was very concerned about the safety. Jim may think I'm talking out of school, but Jim was just more concerned about banning them outright and how to find a law to legislate that way. Jim wasn't, and wasn't malicious either. Jim's a good guy. We drafted a law. I worked a lot with John on it. And uh, but there's a whole procedure. It didn't come together. And then the planning board, they met with me afterwards. And they said, look, we got to do this law. And at that point, Randy was still on the planning board had been elected. But I met with him, and we discussed, you know, what has to be done next. And an earlier draft of the law was actually just a series of amendments. Then it was decided to make sure it sort of encompassed and dealt with all the laws of the town. So it was revised again. And I'm not a person that looks forward to litigation. That just costs the taxpayers money. It's not a wise use of public funds. So you try to craft a law that is the best interest. And it's Anne Marie, and Anne Marie was around when we were doing this the first time. And you try to make a law, it's not going to be perfect. I try, I can't, you know what? As I always said to my clients when I used to litigate regularly, I'll do my best, but I can't guarantee success. And I don't guarantee I'll make you happy. But I will get a result. That's what's going to end up here. They're going to make an informed decision. But even so, as Randy said, next month they, you know, they can have their hearing on the 15th again or open it up. The board makes the decision. They don't have to vote on it next month. They can vote on it later. You know, it's, it's an open-ended process. And so uh, you're allowed to speak your mind and everything. This isn't uh, the Soviet Union or modern-day China with Xing Jinping. Sorry, just, I do have a problem with dictatorial government, so. Anyways, folks, it's, I'm glad everyone got to speak tonight and freely. You know there won't be any personal retribution against anybody here because this is America. And thank God we still have rights. And Rick can write whatever the hell he wants in the paper. And I've been reading Rick for over 12 years. And <laughs> green, disagreeing, but always entertained and respecting him.
<laughs> Sorry, Rick, I gotta pick on you, man. But there you go, folks. That's the best I can say. It ends up being that from the state, down to the county, down to the town, it all just, they just keep passing the buck down the line. And as a resident here, after they pass it down to the town, the town then passes it on to us. But if they want to put in windmills to be able to generate some income, any income at all, I mean, where, do, where, where would the, where does the money come from? I guess that's my question. You know, if it doesn't come from the windmills, it's going to come from us. Yeah, you're right. That's just my thoughts on it.